Hi everyone, this is Marcy at Prince and Paints. Welcome back to another art session today. Uh, today we're going to be painting a smaller mandala and it is going to be a six inch MDF hardboard. I'm going to be doing a series of these as well in the future. So I have a bunch of these and I figured I would do something interesting. I drew inspiration from my local coffee shop. They have some beautiful colors in their palette as far as the interior design goes and I was really inspired by the colors. I can show a few pictures here if you like to see what it looks like and I really wanted to go with a color palette that is drawn to what I was seeing. So with saying that, I am working off a six inch mandala. I am going to probably have this as a centerpiece and then I'm also going to have a much larger piece in the future and I will be inserting this into the center. Lately, I've been wanting to do some thick MDF like this, and then I just purchased myself a router, so I'm learning how to route out parts of my larger MDFs and then inserting these like puzzle pieces. It is kind of a new creation that I'm going towards. I am still trying to figure out how we can go about doing that with tutorials for you. So, you know, keep your eyes out for future tutorials. We'll definitely have something in the works for that. For this purpose, though, we are going to just do a small little mandala that can fit in the center portion of maybe a much larger future video for a larger mandala. So this one is going to be a half an inch in thickness. So the reason I did a half inch, obviously, like I just explained, was that I want to uh, route out a larger portion of a mandala and then fit this inside. If you don't want to do that and you have something thinner, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. This is really just for inspiration for colors, palettes, color schemes, and getting some patterns down on our mandala. So. I'm using six inches. That's that's what I'm going to be using. The colors we're going to be using today. So the background color, our base color, is going to be black forest green. Again, I'm using all deco Americana paints. If you have something else that you'd like to use, please by all means just find something similar to the color that we are using, the color value. So black forest green. This one is burnt orange. They're very fall-like colors. And these were drawn, like I said, from the local coffee shop I have. This is cinnamon stick. Honey brown. Deep okra. Poetic plum. Blush pink. And a little bit of a highlight, we're gonna use sugared peach. I also have two other colors that I may use. Now I just picked these up at my local craft fair, uh, local craft store. Sorry, um, I got them at Hobby Lobby. Now, if you don't have these, you can also use Deco Art Dazzling Metallics, or just skip the step. I'm still looking about incorporating these two colors. I may not. I think I definitely want to want to use the rose gold. So this is the brand called Treasure Gold, and it's by Folk Art. I have never used these before, so I don't know how they are, but they look amazing. Really good, really nice brand. They are a bit pricey. You're gonna spend about $15 on this paint alone. So this is only four fluid ounces, that's not much. I got it anyway, just to try it. So I have rose gold, which I might pair well with my blush pink, and then I might use the green gold. Maybe. I don't know if it's going to really go with this tone, so we might just leave this out for another project, but I do have it on hand. Like I said, if you don't have this particular one, you can try Mink Pearl, which is also kind of like a rose gold color in the Deco Art uh, Dazzling Metallics, so we can do that as well. What else? They also sell, I believe I got this at Walmart. So they do sell folk art. 
in the metallics and this is also rose gold probably as similar as you can get with this one this one might be a little bit more on the pink side so again just to show you the paint this is our paint palette what we're going to be doing again the green is going to be our backdrop so this is going to be our main color of our background we are not doing black today so we're going to do green now what else are we going to use so the items we're going to use obviously like I said an MDF if you're not using that you can use something else just try to keep it in the six inch size I have a large brush to paint my back background color my green color I have a series of brushes that we may do for swooshes as well so I have a small one I have a medium size and I have the very long large size these work fantastic I also got these at Hobby Lobby if you don't want to use these you can find something online I will leave a description for everything I use I'm also going to be sticking with my DIY dotting tools you can use mark mandalas happy dotting whatever your choice I'm also going to be using my go-to's as far as my stylist pens. They have a variation size from one to five. One being the smallest, five being the largest. I'm also going to be using this Micro Dotter by the brand Winstonia. It's actually a marble water tool, but it's very thin, very small. I will also be using pouring medium for diluting my paints when needed. To put the paints in, I'm going to be using a basic tray for acrylic paints. I'm going to be using a watercolor, which is by Faber-Castell. This is the white watercolor pencil, I believe. I bought this also at Hobby Lobby. Those you can also find online. I'm also going to be using a eight segment stencil. This helps me get my segment lines. And then I can also do my guidelines if I'd rather map them out that way. Or I can just use a ruler, the ruler I sell online. So we have those. And then anything else, I think that's all I have is me. So to start off, I already did the background, the green, the black forest green. So I did that already and I did the sides as well. I will probably do the background, the back part of it, um, like a black color. I usually like to paint the back as well with something. But for now, I'm just going to leave it and we'll do that at a later time. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously find your center. Now, I cut these myself, so I already have the center of my mandala. If you do not have the center of your mandala, check real quick up above in the card and you can find a video that I made on the how to find the center of your mandala. It is a very quick and easy way to do it so check it out and then come back to the video otherwise we are already at our center point right here what we're going to want to do is get out our segment stencil and i'm just going to line up the circle with the center dot the best i can and i'm going to get out my pencil and from here i'm just lightly sketching out my segment lines I don't think I'm going to do the guidelines with this stencil. I'm going to focus on doing guidelines using my ruler. I like the spacing better with my ruler than these, but the choice is yours. If you don't have my ruler, no obligation to get it. You can use the segment. You can use the, the stencil. So there are my eight segments that I have mapped out. Now what I want to do is I'm going to get out my ruler. 
I'm going to get myself a tack and then I just like to use this little tiny hammer to quickly attach my tack into my mandala. I may not even have to do that because I have a rather large hole here and it might just be able to go right through but I'm going to get a tack real quick. So I've got my tack in hand. I'm just going to start at the zero marking and I'm going to attach my tack like so. I'm just pushing down on this. I am going to use my hammer just a tad bit. There we go. It's just a little bit. And now we can start making some circles. I like to start at the midpoint and kind of work myself around. So because this one's so small, I'm actually going to keep the ruler semi-stationary and I'm just moving the actual mandala around. So I got my first one. This So this is two inches from the center. We're going to do one inch. Now if this was much bigger, I could potentially just do, you know, the, the motion of the circles that we normally make. So this is exactly at three because we are six inches, right? So we cannot do the three. So we're going to go two and three quarters. That'll be our last one on the base. And we're going to do two and a half. And remember this ruler that I have is every quarter of an inch marking. So then we're going to be two and a quarter. And this just helps keep us spaced apart so that our dots are lined up really nicely. So we're going to keep going. So this is one and three quarters. One and a half. a little bit of a snag there. Let's get that fixed. There we go. One and a quarter. Now I know this may seem like a lot of lines and it's, you know, it could be sloppy to some people, but remember I am using a watercolor pencil and this will come right off with a little bit of warm water or damp cloth, I should say, any kind of water. So this is three quarters now. Now we're at half an inch. I might have to sharpen my pencil a little bit. I'm getting a little bit. Remember, once the tack's in there, you got a lot of leeway. So I think that's good, guys. I'm only going to start at half an inch. I don't need to do the quarter. There we go. So we're all done with that. I'll put my ruler aside. Actually, I'm going to take it back out real quick and I am going to sharpen my pencil and we're going to finish our segment lines that we have because they don't go all the way to the edge and I want them to be there. So let me get a sharpen my pencil real quick. So this is just a basic pencil sharpener, nothing fancy. Good. And I'm just going to make sure that the ruler is lined up with the center of the the dot of the circle and then also my my segment lines here so that I can go across like this. I'm just going to go to all the way like that. I'm just making them more dominant so that I can see them because I don't want to get lost in translation and confused about where my leg my lines are. So I'm just doing all eight of them. This is what I love about the ruler idea because you can still use it as your segment lines, your ruler, but then also make your guidelines. So I have great news too about my ruler guys. So I'm in the process now of I've had a pending patent and surprisingly enough, I know I haven't talked about this much, but you know, this, this concentric ruler idea in circles has been around for a while, but no one's actually had it patented. <laughs> so I was very fortunate that when I called a property lawyer about this, that they were able to help me 
figure out how to get a patent pending on this. And so I do, I have a pending patent on the idea and I'm now speaking with a manufacturer on making much elaborate more rulers. I'm going to be doing different sizes. So I think I'm going to be doing three different sizes and uh, I'm going to be getting, um, you know, UV printing on them. I'm going to be getting the holes on both the um, inches and centimeters area because I know a lot of people have been purchasing them globally. So I'm super excited. We're in the final stages of it. So, and then after that, hopefully I'm going to be able to sell them on Amazon as well. I'm hoping for the best in a smooth process. So anyway, back to what we were doing, sorry. So we have our eight segments mapped out. Now we can start painting. We're gonna to wanna to get some of our paints and we're gonna to wanna to mix them in our trays and then we'll start. Okay guys, so I mixed a few of my paints first. I mainly focused on doing my blush pink, my poetic purple, my deep okra, and my sugared peach. I'm going to come to these, the oranges and the browns in a bit, but I'm going to focus on these colors first. So if you want to mix them and start with me, like let's do that. So the first one we're going to do, I think we're going to go with a size 13 and we're going to go into our blush pink. That is going to be our center dot today. So again, I'm just going to try to dot that the best I can and make it centered. I'm going to dot that twice. The second one I'm just kind of pulsating that dot so that I get a nice bubble. We'll clean that dotting tool off. Now I'm going to go into doing um, a series of micro dots. So I'm going to get out my Winstonia micro dotter. If you have a size one you can go with that as well. They're fairly close in size. I just love using this tool. So I'm going to go into my Poetic Plum now and I'm basically going to do micro dots around my blush pink dot that I just did. So that's going to be the start of it. I'm just going to start on one side particular. I'm starting on the right side and I'm just dotting going in a counterclockwise motion. If you don't feel comfortable doing it this way do whatever means is nice, you know, necessary for you. I like to go from one end to around and then I turn my mandala and I keep going that way. I know some people like to do it differently and that's okay. Do whatever makes you happy and whatever's comfortable for you. Our main concern is that we are just going to be doing some micro dots around the large dot. I feel that as an artist, and you are all artists doing this craft, that everybody has their own style and their own technique and the own way of how they like to paint, right? So okay, there we go. I got a series of my micro dots around like so. I don't know if you can see this. Shall I zoom in today? That might help, huh? All right, so there's our micro dots. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna go with, let's see, so we're gonna focus on our eight segments that we did, the eight lines that we have, and I'm going to go into my sugared peach, which is that whitish kind of cream color and I'm going to use the number two dotting tool. Now you can use, let me zoom out a little so I can show you, you can use the stylus pen tool that we have or if you want to use the DIYs or whatever tools you have. Just try to focus on the size two for this dotting, okay? So again, I'm going to focus on doing the segment lines. What I mean by that is I'm going to dot right here, right after the micro dot, one single dot. And right here. It's 
So I'm going to do for all of them all the way around. And just remember to try to do it a little bit past those micro dots, not too close to this line here. Put them more in. That's great. Just like that. And now, what we can do is we're going to go, so we're going to use the same size, and I'm going to go into my deep okra. And what I'm going to do now is, <clears throat> I'd say, mm, I'd say like a little bit staggered, so maybe down a little bit right here. I'm going to do a deep okra color, just like that. I'm just doing a little stagger just to give it that little bit of negative space, but also let's add some style to it, add some design. So it should look something like that. So they're kind of like zigzagging a bit. So now, now I can get my orange colors and I can start doing some swoosh pulls. I think the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to want to do one larger dot. And what I'm going to do by that is I'm going to get my size 5 stylus. Or actually I'm going to use my size 5 uh, DIY tool. And with this I'm going to do the X portions. So if, if this is north up here, right? And this is south, east, and west. So this one would technically be like northeast, and this is northwest. So when I refer to that, or this is southeast and southwest. So we're doing the northeast, northwest, so the X's that we did. Not so much the crossover, but we're doing the X's. So with the size 5 and the sugared peach color, I'm going to dot... And I'm going to dot right after that, that one we just did, like so, just like that. It's a little bit past the line and that's okay. It's kind of on the line in between the both. And then one over here. So it look like that. Now I can get my oranges. I'm going to mix my oranges real quick. So I'm going to get my cinnamon stick. Add a bit to the tray. I'm gonna get my burnt orange, add to the tray. And I have my honey brown color, which is kind of on the yellowish hue, but it's, I would consider it like with the orange hues. Um, this one, uh, yeah, it's getting a little bit empty. Gosh, I use these colors so much. It's crazy. I have to get more paint already. So, now I can mix. I'm going to get some of my pouring medium real quick. And I'm going to add some pouring medium to each one. And then I'm just going to mix them real quick with my dotting tool. And this will just help make the flow a little bit easier. Ugh. I think my honey brown seen better days. I think I might have to open a newer one. I want to show you something real quick, guys. So, do you see this, like, glob of stuff? Do you see that? It's like a thick... That's what I was talking about in my last video where your paint is starting to go bleh, it's like seeing better days. This was inside the bottle. So this is like the skin or something that was inside that bottle. I don't even know what that is to be honest. That's that's pretty gross. It looks like paper. You don't want that. No, 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 you don't want that. And if you start seeing that, I would consider tossing the bottle of paint. I have another one, so I'm just gonna get some new when I need it. We are going to focus on what color first? We're going to do burnt orange first. So the burnt orange is this nice bright orangey tone. 
but it's like a deeper orange than our normal bright orange colors, see? So it's more on the darker brownish orangey color. And with that, I'm going to use my number three stylus. So I'm gonna go with my blue one. And let's see, I think yeah, we're the northeast, southeast, all those areas, we're going to do our swoosh. So I'm going to show you, let's see, actually, no, we're going to do the north, south, and east. We're going to do that with my bed because this is going to be something else. So in these negative spots, because we have this large dot here and that's going to taper out into another design. So we're going to focus on doing north, south, east, and west. So I'm going to get my size three and I'm going to go into my burnt orange. And so my sugared peach number five dot fell on that next line right there. So the next one down right here, I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it better. And right here, I'm gonna dot right below the line. And I'm gonna flip this over and I'm actually gonna pull with my size two. And I'm just pulling all the way up to that dot. That's perfect just as is. That's what I want, something like that. So I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to go here. And I'm going to dot right below the line. And I'm just like kind of pulsating that dot so it becomes a nice bubble. And then I go in, and I slowly pull up towards that sugared peach dot. And I'll do that for all th all. Th four of those areas. So here's the next one. If you have a little bit of an area that looks a little funky, that's okay. You can push that paint around, but you should be okay to just pull it up. I'm just going to wipe this off real quick. And the last one. And there we go. There's our last one. So I'm just cleaning these off. I don't like to get the paint dried on my stylus. So that's our burnt orange. Now the next one we're going to do is our cinnamon stick. And we're going to go size down. So we're going to do a size 2 stylus. And I'm going into my cinnamon stick. Now this is the more brownish orangey color. So quickly to show you, so it's this one, the brown orangey color we're going to go into. And this is going to kind of go right next to that burnt orange. Okay. So I'm going to go right, I'm going to go right next to it. And I'm going to curve up. I'm dotting and I'm kind of curving around so it's it doesn't follow it up this way like it normally does it's coming up but it's going this way so it's like I don't know we'll see Let's see how this comes out okay I'm just trying something different this time around with some leaving some negative spaces in there and seeing how that may turn out. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it very much, but we'll see. So we're going to stick with our, our same stylus, so the number two, and I'm going to go into my honey brown now, and I'm just going to follow that curve of the other one, like so. Being careful that the paints don't mix together. But I also try to want to do them as close as possible.
There we go. And the last one we're going to do is, let's see, we're going to do, actually we're going to do our deep okra. So we're going to go into our deep okra, which is our yellow that we had. Same size. Now I'm going to kind of go a little bit higher than my honey brown. And we're going to do one more color after this one. And then the last one we're going to do is our sugared peach. That one I'm actually going to do my size one stylus. So I'm going to go into my sugared peach with my number one. I'm going to dial a little bit higher than that other, the okra. And I'm just going to carefully follow that tapered. This one got a little bit of yellow in it. That's okay. We can always go over it. I think I'm going to fill this in too, guys. I'm not sure if I like it very much. I might fill it in. So, I wonder how that would look if I filled it in with the brown, yeah, with the burnt orange. I think I am. So, you don't have to do this. I'm going to do it, only because I'm, I'm not really fond of the look of that negative space in the center. I feel like it looks a little sloppy. So, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking more paint onto my burnt orange. The burnt orange was the first color we did, and I'm just kind of pulling out with my size one. I already had it in my hand. And I'm kind of pulling out that center swoosh and making it more of like a teardrop than a skinny swoosh going all the way up. Does that make sense? So it's more like a teardrop. So this one's going to be like a teardrop too. So even though it is a, like a technically already a teardrop, it's a very skinny one. So we're just kind of making it wider. So what I'm doing is just dabbing some paint onto my stylus and then pulling it around. Be careful because it could be starting to dry in some areas. So you don't want to scratch it and push that paint around too much. I'm lightly just moving it around. And you don't need much. This is a small area anyway that we're working with. So, yeah, I like that better. I just wanted to fill that in. I did not really like that negative space. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of winging it as we go here. I didn't have any plan of attack. I just had a color idea. So I'm running with it. So that looks better. So I filled that in. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do something coming out here. So this large dot right here, we're going to do another swoosh that kind of comes in, I think, in this little area, just like so. And right there. Yeah. So let's get, we're going to do, we're going to go back into our purple. And I'm going to use our size 7 dotting tool. And I'm going to start the dot past this next guideline that we have not touched yet. So it's going to go right about there. Can you see that? So right about there. That's how it's going to look. I'm going to do one there. I'm going to do one here one here 
and one over here. And then make sure there's a lot of, on there. So if you have to dot it twice, because we're going to pull these and make swooshes. So now I'm going to get, you can either, like I said, get your micro dotter or your size one and just pull down the line until you get to the dot and then pull the sides out too to make it a little bit wider like that perfect I'll do that for each one If you find that it's it's kind of getting a little gloppy looking all you gotta do is clean off your tool make it a nice fresh clean tool and then you can pull that paint again and you get nice clean lines I'd say nine times out of ten if your if your dots aren't working the way that you want them to and it's not in your favor it's probably because you have too much paint on your dotting tool and you weren't cleaning it off and it started drying because it could be a real mess, like that. There we go. So there's our first swoosh. Now we're doing the purple. Now we're going to go into doing our blush pink. So again, the same size, I think. Yeah, no, I'm going to do size 6. I'm going down a size. Just one size. So I'm going to do size 6. And I'm kind of going to do this one now like on the line the next line that we had there available so it looks kind of like that I'm going to do one at a time so they don't dry as much now I'm going to pull this I'm kind of pulling the center if you notice from the dot but it's at an angle and I'm going up towards that center point then the side I'll pull up along the swoosh I had the purple one and then over here, I want to pull that up a bit too. Like that. And then I'll do the other side. There we go. And then I'll just finish the rest of them really quick. Okay guys, so we finished our blush pink swooshes around our Poetic Plum color. And now we're going to do just a couple little dots. So let me show you. I'm going to use my size 1 dotting tool. And I'm going to go into my sugared peach. And basically this is just a little added detail to it. I'm going to quickly just dot right at the base where this line is right here and I'm just going to walk that dot up to the other sugar large peach dot right there and do it on both sides so I'm going to start the line you may run into this color right there and that's okay it's the same color really so it doesn't matter I am going to clean my tool off every time I do this so again this one And like I said, this is just a nice little added details. These details can really stand out when you do these types of, this type of design. Almost done. This one. Good. So there we go. It's a cute little design going on. So now we're going to go back to this area. So if you notice, we're building in layers and we're working our way out. So right here, we're going to focus on doing a large dot right here so that it can create this nice little area to fill in. So I'm going to get a larger dotting tool now. I'm going to probably go with a size 10 dotting tool. And I'm going to go into my poetic plum again 
because I want it to match the dot in the center. So I'm going to do something like this. And this is going to be replicating like adjacent from the burnt orange and the orange tones that you have. So if you're looking at it, it should be your south, your north up here. Again, I'm just double dotting so I can get a nice bubble form. I'm going to do my east. my west but I'm gonna flip it over it's just easier this way so I don't put my hand in the paint so north south east west now my micro daughter I can either push this around a little bit and clean up these dots so that they're not so plump in the center I want them a little bit moved around. I'm going to use my sugared peach, my micro daughter, and this one I'm just basically making the same size dots and I'm going all the way around these large dots I just did. It's kind of similar to that beginning part that we also did. Just be careful that they don't bleed together so you don't need much on your micro daughter tool, just a little bit. If you find it's becoming too gloppy, clean it off. That's all you gotta do. So let's do that for all of them. So there are our micro dots around the large ones. Now we're going to get out our brushes. So let's be daring. We're going to go with our smaller one that we have. So if you have a small brush similar to this style, let me see if I can, so you can see. So this is very small fairly thin. I actually trimmed off some of the outer bristles to make it a bit thinner. If you don't have something like this, you can try to use these two. I feel like this is going to be too long because we're not making huge swooshes with this one. We don't have the room really for it. So I do have this medium sized one as well. I prefer to have something very tiny like this. So try it out. See if you like it. This is by the Zhu Ting. It's a size zero brush, so I'll leave the, the link in the uh, description for you if you wanna get these brushes. I actually really do love these brushes. There was a lot of them that came in the pack too. So we're gonna try to do a swoosh. Now, I'm trying to think of what colors to use. I think I'm gonna go with my honey brown and my yellow. So I'm gonna do my honey brown first. So I'm just gonna, I'm just dipping my brush into the paint and I kind of swirl it around. I don't get a lot on there. It's just enough. You don't want a huge clop on there. I'm also going to do this kind of backwards because I feel like it's easier on my wrist instead of doing flat and then pulling down. So I like to do it starting here instead of down here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to like 
press down and then we're going to lightly taper off like so and so it looks like something like that. Now I want to try to taper that down a little bit longer so I'll go to this side as well and we're going to do something like that so we're joining them together. Let's try it again. So. I like to do it this way. If you find that you have better luck the other way around, that's okay. I know Demi is like the queen of these swooshes and she has some phenomenal videos on teaching you how to do this technique. So definitely check her out. She's an amazing artist. Thoughtful Dots is her, her business name. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of her by now. So you should have something that looks like that. Now I'm just going to clean off my brush. I don't have to go in with water. I'm just kind of cleaning it with a damp cloth. And I'm going to go into my deep okra, which is my yellow, my mustard yellow color. And again, I'm going to dot. I'm going to do the same process. I'm just going to go a little bit lower. So if you notice, you have a little bit of that guideline peeking through. It's the same guideline where you started these micro dots on. So we're going to start right there. And then we're going to follow this down. So, I'm going to start over here as well, and we're going to join them together like that. And then again, and when you do this, you just want to have that nice sweeping motion. You want to do it fairly quickly. You don't want to get hung up on it. So you want to press down and as you're pressing down you're lightly picking it back up. And when you do that you're going to create that nice tapered edge to it. The end is going to be tapered. It's all in the wrist. It's the pressure that you allow it to to have. So you press down and pull up. And, and even so, when I'm pressing here, it's not like I'm pushing it like this. Like I'm not taking it and going <laughs> like I'm just lightly touching it and then picking it back up. It's a very feathered like feel when you're doing it. So down and then up. And as you do it, you kind of flick that wrist like this click it. All right. And that'll help you get that design like that. So that's good. We're done with that. Now we're going to continue. So we're going to do the same concept, but we're going to just start growing our dots. So now this was a size 10. So now I'm going to go to like, I'd say a size 12. So get your size 12 dotting tool out and this time we're going to go into our oranges. So I'm going to go into my burnt orange with my size 12 and right below where the purple was, I'm dotting right there. Okay. So we'll do all of the ones with can jibber like so. Some of these I might do some top dots with the green as well, I'm not sure. Like the background color I had. We'll see though. I feel like I need to incorporate the green back into it somehow. So that's good. So see we have our larger ones now. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can start seeing how it's coming together. That looks really cool. 
So now we're going to do micro dots again. So I'm going to go in with my sugared peach again. I'm going to use my micro dotter or your size one. And I'm starting at the base here, it doesn't really matter where you start. And like I said, I'm only kind of getting maybe two dots out of each one. So one, two, and then I dip it back in. One, two, and I keep going around. If I find that my dots are getting a little bit larger than the other ones around it, it's a quick fix. It's just wiping off the dotting tool. That's one. So we'll do the other ones. So there we go. Gonna get some little dots forming here. We want to get our green and probably touch that up. So there's our micro dots. Now I'm gonna do one more row, but I'm gonna do my size two. So I'm gonna get my size two stylus out. If you want to use your other dotting tool, go right ahead. I'm gonna get a new cloth out. And again, the same color, so the sugared peach. This time I'm starting at the base, so where the line, the segment line is, I'm going to start the dot there. And I'm going to do some walking dots. So what I do is I go up about a quarter of the way, so right about here, and then I walk the rest of it, like so. If I did start at the base here, my dots would be super tiny, and then I wouldn't really see them as well. So. I like to do it that way. So again, I dot the center portion right here on the line, and then I do one on either side. So I'm, I'm dipping every time here. And then I go up another. Now I'm kind of going up to the segment line, if you notice. So I dot, and then I walk the rest all the way up. I dot and walk the rest up just until I get to that purple swoosh. Again, here we go. Dot, dot, and then dot and walk. Oops, I got a little hung up on that one. That's okay. Dot, and then one more, and then we walk. I'm not going to go back and fix that. It, it didn't look terrible, so I'm just going to leave it. Sometimes flaws are good. So there's one, two, unless you're a perfectionist, right? And then you have to fix it. So I tend to leave things sometimes. Okay. 
There we go, and there's our walking dots. So that looks great. I like the highlight color because it makes the rest of it kind of pop out a little bit. We got this really interesting center flower here going on too, right here, which I love. So, so now we're going to do some walking dots as well. So we're going to go up in our size. So we're going to go with our size four, which is the purple. If you use these, this is a size four stylus dotting. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go this way, but we're going to taper down this way instead. So I'm starting with a large size up here and marking my way down here instead of going large and up. We're going to do our pink and purple with these colors. Now you can do it from up here if you find it to be easier. I'm going to try to do that and show you and I'll also try to do it down this way. So I'm going into my blush pink and I'm going to start up here like so and then I'm just walking that dot down and I kind of curved a little bit just to fall on the line. So if I do the other side, again, I'm just walking it down until I get down like that. And you see how it kind of curves down. I like doing it better this way. I find it easier on my wrist to do it this way. But we can try the other way as well. So we could do one and then we're just following that curve like so and then over here dot and then we follow the curve just like that yeah I think they both look the same so really I guess I could do it either way I remember I'm just following on the orange ones though we're not touching these yellow swoosh swooshes is. Again, remember to clean off your dotting tool when you need to. Otherwise, you won't get tapered dots. You'll have really large dots at the base. And we don't want that. So, so now we're going to go into our purple. I'm going to go up a size. So I'm going into the size 5 now. This is the largest stylus size I have. And I'm going into my Poetic Plum. And I'm kind of just filling in this spot right here. I can't obviously get in here. I don't want to. Otherwise, I'll be going into the yellow. So I'm just going to dot like right about there. And then I walk the dot down to the same spot again over here. Like that kind of hard to see the purple, I apologize. I don't know if you can see the purple. So see, like that. So we'll do this one again, so you can see it. I'm going to start at this little intersection there, and then and I'm just ending on the next line here. So I kind of go and swirl, do a little swoosh there a little bit. And like that. And then it ends that way. Clean this off. Go to the next one. And there we go. Perfect. So now I think we're going to do a few more things and then we're almost done with this actually. So we're going to do, we're going to do a dot here and then do a fan out in this area just to fill it in. So I'm going to go into my size, oh, where is it? I'm going to do my size seven dotting tool size 7 dotting tool and then we're going to go into doing we're going to do our cinnamon stick and cinnamon stick is just going to fall right in that cross section right there so do it again 
that fell on that line, right? So then the next one here, right in the cross section, boom, like that. I do that for every single one. Again, this is size seven dotting tool, like so. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it. And then below this, we're gonna do a nice big swoosh. So I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up to the size, yeah, I'm gonna go size nine. Actually 10 and then nine. So we'll do 10 in the center. The center one's going to be our, our yellow. So our deep okra. And I'm doing the last line down here. That's how far down I'm gonna go with this one. So I'm gonna go all the way down right here like so with our size 10 dotting tool. I got a nice bubble in there and then I'm going to take my puller either my size one or my micro daughter and I'm going to pull this up the line to that cinnamon stick color. I'm also pulling the sides because I want to make a pretty big teardrop. I'm going to make a nice fat teardrop here. Like that. I'll do that for all of these other three ones as well. So yeah, guys, I had a pretty rough couple of weeks. I was sick for one. I, I got, my kids got a cold and I was pretty sick as well. And so I struggled with that a bit, but I pushed through it. You know, I, life goes on and you have to get better. So I was sick and I lost my voice a little bit and it was bothering me. So it was hard to make videos. So if you notice, I was doing some time-lapse ones with music. It's because I couldn't talk and my, my voice is still kind of raspy. And then on top of that, a couple weeks ago, we, we had that hurricane weather come in and it like destroyed New York City for like a few days. I've never seen the city like that. I live about an hour from New York City and it was really bad. The streets were filling up and flooded and all like areas were flooded and underwater. I had a few friends who work the subways and it looked really bad and I was really praying and hoping that they were okay. I know, you know, family members and friends that live in the city still. Um, definitely a scary, not a lot of people have seen it that bad before, so it's definitely, definitely an eye-opener, you know? So we did our, we did our deep okra, right? So we had that cool-looking teardrop shape there going on, so we're almost done with this. Um, now we're going to do some of these like this, like, kind of like what we did in here. So we're going to go fan up and go that way. So I'm thinking the next colors we're going to do, let's do, ooh, ooh, let's do sugared peach actually. So we're going to go with size nine. So we're going down a size and I'm just basically going to I'm going to go right next to my deep okra, but also a little bit down from that line, right? Okay, like so. Now, I, I feel like I should probably do these with brushes. Let's see. Let's get our little brush out and see how we can work this out. I don't know if I like the brush. It was a little bit too big at the top there for me. Maybe we need to go a little bit smaller in the size. See? Eh, it's okay. 
I think I'm going to try my brush. Let's see with the brush, because we already did those, though, so I don't want to screw it up. Let's see. See, I like the brush better, but those are really big now, so mm, we might have to remove some of that. I don't know which one I like better. Which one do you like better? I think I like that one better. That one's kind of like meh. It doesn't look that right. Let's let's stick with the the pulling and the swoosh. I kind of like the the look of them a little bit better. We could do it that way by just using the brush and pulling it up. Let's try it that way, and then we'll dot the base of it so it's nice and wide. If you don't want to do it this way, by all means, use your puller and pull them up. I'm just trying something different today. So I'm just kind of taking the brush and I'm pulling it up and I'm gradually like easing up on the pressure as I go up. Not terrible. It does leave some like line markings here though, which I can deal without. And the last one. So the next color we're going to do is our burnt orange again. And I think I'm just going to go with my brush now. I actually think I'm going to go with the, the medium size. So I'm going to go with this medium size one now. See how this turns out. So I'm going into my burnt orange. Just enough on there. And I'm going to want to go a little bit up from there. Oh yeah. So that's a little hard because we don't have much space to, to pull up. So we have to be careful. So if we go down, we immediately go back up again. So down, and I'm only going about halfway with the bristles. And then I pull up again. Down. Yeah, I don't get a nice tapered look. Eh. That's what's hard about doing small mandalas like this. Because you want to use these brushes, but then you don't have much space to do it. It's okay. It still looks good. Sorry, I've been trying to corp incorporate the, the brush more often in my videos. I don't think I do enough of this. So, so I'm just wiping this clean. I do have a little bit of water here that I can squirt on here just to clean it. There we go. We'll keep going with these swoosh looking things here. So now we're gonna go, ooh, 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 what are we gonna do? We're gonna go into our cinnamon stick. And then our honey brown. So again, I'm gonna go a little bit up from there. I'm 
And that's all you want to do when you do these kinds of swooshes like this. We're just going to go up a little bit until we go all the way up. Now we're going to go into doing our honey brown. I feel like this one I should do the smaller brush. It's not really working this medium size. It's a little too large. Let's see how the little one works. Because I need something a little bit more tapered. Oop. So let's try the honey brown with the smaller one. And we're just going to get enough paint on there. Yeah, not terrible. I'm cleaning the brush off real quick and I'm going to get my stylus out again. So I'm going to go with my size 4 stylist and I'm just going to keep going here. I'm going to do one or two more up at the top here but after that I want to stop. So I'm going to go into my blush pink. And so like right about here I'm going to do one. These also aren't at 100% even. I wish they were. That's okay though. Or two, if this has got, I got a little bit of that on there, so I'll just dab that. It's okay. Fix that dot. I gotta get some paint on there from the other colors. Okay. Finish this one up, so we'll do our pink. we'll do one more color maybe we'll leave that as I think we're gonna do one more we'll do the purple so I'm going into size 3 now and again I'm just gonna go right up to there and that's just gonna finish off that that look so on this one I think I did all of the colors
Now I'm going to tie this in probably by doing um, some walking dots as well like I did here with these. So let's see how I'm going to do this one. I think I'm going to do the, the sugared peach again. So let's get this stirred up a little bit more. It's starting to get a little bit dry here. So I'm just adding some pouring medium to it to thin it out again. And I want to walk my dots again. So <clears throat> I'm going to start right around this area where the purple was up here. And then I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and then walk my dot down to there. I'm going to start this side with the purple one two, three, and then on the fourth one, walk the dot down. I'm just walking down until I get to the base down there. So again, one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go up in a size. So now I'm going to go two sizes actually. I'm going to go to the size five. All right. And this time, I'm going to do my deep okra color. So I'm just going to stir this up a bit because they're starting to settle. My deep okra. This time, I'm going to start a little bit below that first part. So I'm going to start right about there. And then this, because it's size 5. I don't need to dot a couple of them. I can just go all the way down. And I just go down till I can't anymore. Now we can get out our brush again. I'm going to use the small one that I have. I'm going to go into my honey brown. And right here, I'm just going to do that swoosh again. So I'm going to, and I'm just tapering off like that. I do on both sides. Now let's focus on this little area right here, and then we're finished. We can do some top dots as well. I'm going to do some top dots with the, I think I'm going to do the rose gold with the top dots and the green. So the next part, let's see, I'm going to do...
So what we're going to do is go into our size 13 again, the large, and we're going to fill in a dot right about this area. Okay, and then we'll do some walking dots, I think, or some swooshes around that. So I'm going to say, let's see. Let's do our cinnamon stick color. I'm going to dot right about here. So the next lines that are down, okay. Again, that, and right here. Okay. Good. So now, I think what we're going to do is some swooshes in this direction going around, just kind of like the little horseshoes. So I'm going to go with my size 3 dotting tool, and I'm going to go into my sugared peach. I'm just dotting on the side corner like so and then working my way up like that. And I'm kind of, I want to go around this dot. So I'm going to hug around. This one I went a little off, but that's okay. So, <clears throat> again, like so. And then I'm going to go into my deep okra, the yellow, same size. And I'm just hugging that other one. So they're like soldiers right next to each other. So the next one we're going to do is our burnt orange. To this orange and there we go there's our little element there I'm gonna do some sugared peach so I'm gonna do size 3 as well and this I'm just gonna dot right below it like that I'm also gonna do the same dot below the okra so right here Pretty much every one is going to have a white dot below it. This one. And then right here. And then that's it. I want to do some walking dots again. I'm going to go with my pink. My blush pink and my size 3 again. Um, I'm just going to loosen this up a bit with some corn medium. And 
I'm going to dot right here and work my way down like so. Right here, work my way down like that. I'm just following that curve. Perfect. Okay guys, so I finished <clears throat> doing the walking dots here and those are all done. Now I'm going to focus on doing some top dots and then I think I'm done with it. I don't want to go too far into it because this is only going to be like the center portion of a much larger scale that I'm doing. So this, I'm going to get out this new rose gold color that I got and I'm going to use my size 4 dotting tool. Already I can see that the consistency is definitely pretty thick. See how it kind of clings to the, yeah. <clears throat> so we might have to dilute this somehow or just swing it. We're going to try, we're going to try these dots first right here. So we're going to do a nice amount on there, right in the center kind of have to swirl it to get it off there but it looks nice it's a nice color so I'm dotting this size I think these were size what 10 blush pink color dots so I'm doing top dots on those and I will go back in and do the center one as well I'm just going to do a bigger size so these are good they're not they look, they look pretty good. Making sure I get that center. Like so. <clears throat> I'm also going to dot these ones as well. Right here. I almost think that this paint would be great if you put it in cones, honestly. The consistency, it's its more of like a, a hard body paint than it is a soft body crafting paint. That's for sure. I am just using this straight out of the bottle, so we'll see how those top dot bubbles form and how they come out. They do look really great, <clears throat> as is. So, I'm going to go down a size, go to size 3. And I'm going to do these top dots on this too. What else? So, we want to do, I'm probably going to do top dots on these as well. But they are still a little bit wet, so I'm going to do one in the center. I'm going to do a top dot with this size 7 in my DIY dotting tool. And I'm just trying to pull that paint down into that bubble. And then I twirl it around so it comes off. There we go. It has a nice amount of volume to it. They look really beautiful. I'm going to flip this around and use size 8 for these ones. They are a little wet, so we'll see how they turn out. Not bad. That one got a little stringy. You gotta be careful when you pull it up because it, it can leave a long string. You wanna wrap that string so that it stays there. So that's pretty cool. That looks pretty great. I think I might do one more thing. I'm not sure though. I'm debating on using some of my gold my splendid gold and doing a top swoosh here on the okra with the gold. I'm not entirely sure. I might do that off camera and we'll see how it looks. But I think we're done guys. So we just want to clean up the lines now. 
and you know I think that's gonna be it maybe we might do one more dot right here but I think I'm gonna leave it as is so if you enjoyed this thank you give a, a like and subscribe to the channel ring the bell for future videos and you know as always happy dotting guys and thanks for joining me I really appreciate your company and hope you enjoyed this tutorial look for the future for the other portion of this I definitely want to include that into my tutorials so keep your eyes peeled for that one but thanks for sticking with me happy dotting as always guys and we'll catch you on the next one bye